good afternoon, everyone in the, the social media platform. And welcome once again to another broadcast of uh, 180 Degree and Family. This program is designed by the Family Planning Institute. Today, I have uh, Mr. Clement Frank, who is the chairman of the Family Planning Institute. And as usual, we will be discussing a number of questions that are posed to us. Um, however, before we get into uh, our conversation today, uh, I simply want to say that the management and staff of the Family Planning Institute uh, wants to recognize the, our new president, uh, Dr. Irfan Ali, his family and team. And uh, we certainly wish them well um, in the, the road ahead of providing leadership, providing guidance, providing support to all of Guyana. Uh, we are truly looking forward for uh, the president that can truly represent uh, collective leadership. And uh, that's collective leadership that incorporates and represents every single member of society. So we wish you well um, in the road ahead, uh, you and your team. Uh, welcome again, Mr. Frank. Thank you. All right. And Mr. Frank, he has a master's degree in economics. Uh, he has years of experience in leadership. He would have been a lecturer at the University of the West Indies. And as usual, we are happy to have, have him here uh, to be a part of uh, these programs. So we're happy to have him as the chairman of the Family Planning Institute. Uh, Frank, I'll go straight into the questions. And one of the questions I'm seeing here is, how does culture influence a highly motivated team player? And uh, the note says team player at the family level and team player at the corporate level. Mm -hmm. how, how, how relevant is, is culture? It is relevant since the corporate or the family structure falls within a culture, a societal culture. How you react as a family to your culture, um, or should we put it, culture impacts family, whether it's economically or social. Mm -hmm. If within your culture as a family group, um, there are certain norms that it is considered right way to do something, and from the pond, if you go against the grain of the culture. So, in that sense, the culture um, influence whoever the family is, that, that group of persons in the home or whatever. How does it affect or in impact corporate? The culture within which you, you, you live, how do you provide or supply whatever brand you have to that culture? How you do it? you either will rise as a corporate structure or you will fall or fail. The thing about it is that within the culture, there's certain, as I said before, norms that the culture accepts. And you as a corporate body going into that culture will have to meet or conform to those norms, good or bad. We see it happen there really Let's take, for example, um, Banks DIH. The culture in which they would have come out is that culture drinking, beverages. And so the thing about it, they cater to that culture. So the culture of drinking has influenced them at a corporate level. That same culture that they are catering to includes family. So the thing about it, culture indeed um, 
influence our behaviors, our actions, and, and what we do, whether as a family or as an organization. And essentially, we're talking about the, the profit making organization. Uh, very strong points. And um, I want to make two points here. I, I agree with you, and I do believe that culture is the heartbeat and uh, blood supply to all social organs. Um, I believe in uh, one of my books, I would have mentioned that uh, culture is the mother of all social systems. And when you fail to develop uh, healthy cultures that reflects the interests of the collective, um, it sets the stage uh, to undermine uh, what could be tremendous possibilities. It sets the stage to undermine the harnessing of the human potential and economic potential of both the family and, and the organization. Um, while we recognize this, what we have also seen is that building a healthy culture and committing to them is where the greatest challenge lies for most families. I think that at a corporate level, the corporate communities, they try their best, I'm to their best. I would want to say that there is room open to be improved and more to be done. But in terms of the family, um, what we're seeing is that uh, very often there might be an attempt to create healthy family cultures but the commitment to those family cultures is where we see uh, a lot of neglect and falling down. I think at a family level, we can see the negative impact on relationships. We can see the negative impact on children. Uh, and we see this when the, that child comes out into society and is now and tasked with the responsibility of integrating into society and uh, trying to position themselves as uh, valuable members of society. Um, so that's just to add to the, to, the to, to, to what you would have said. The second question I'm seeing here, Frank, is does traditional social and corporate culture impacts human development the way that it should. Does traditional social and corporate culture impacts human development the way that it should? Immediately what comes to mind is the term that we use, self-actualization. What do you think? Right. And you know the thing about it, you subtly brought out the answer to that question in your point not so long ago. Now, the thing about it, culture, one is that it's difficult for culture to change. Um, culture also is learned through interaction. In, in a nutshell, culture affects behavior. If you are in a society or an environment where there's a lot of negative, more than likely, I'm not gonna say it's concrete that you're gonna turn out like that, but more than likely, people in a certain culture behave the same way. You would have known why the term ghetto came about. Not just the culture, but the behavior that goes along with the culture. Mm -hmm. And so we have to understand that people shape culture. Mm -hmm. Culture is not that thing out there somewhere in the, in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. The people in the environment are the ones who shape that culture. But the thing about it, the culture can be negotiated. Because, and how can be negotiated? Is that if you, from the ghetto area, is exposed to something better, different lifestyle, an upward kind of lifestyle, you 
after being influenced by that other culture, can go into your ghetto culture and show, not really take away all the norms of them, but show them how they can improve themselves. Something like what the Family Planning Institute is involved in. Mm -hmm. We realize that not everybody, we are from a culture where educational culture does not teach you how to make money. <laughs> and that's sad. That's but, very sad. So, being that parallel education institution that is showing you how to multiply your streams of income, what you're doing is that you are reshaping the mental culture of a person who has been slaved mentally for the for centuries in that educational standard where, okay, all we teach you to do, theory, you work for a company, you retire, and that is it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. my, my, my younger girl, she studying medicine, but you, you know what, what she, she does also? She makes necklace. And she's done, though she's studying medicine, she already has an entrepreneurial spirit where she can say, you know what, I can make chain and this is how much money I can make from this chain. So despite she is in the traditional educational sector, she also is coming with a different culture towards this norm culture. To say, you know what, yes, we can study. Education is good. But I can also make a little thing from the side, another stream of income coming in there. For me, that is wisdom, right? A lot of young people are doing it too. I'm seeing that. I, I'm, I'm seeing that a shift because there's no longer a situation where young people are saying, you know what, I go into university and then I can work for somebody. Most young people, especially the millennials, they won't work for themselves. They ain't waking up any early in the morning for city going anywhere unless they really want to do this work. They don't find it just as, as a means of getting a salary, but they are going there because they want to serve society. As a case of those persons who are studying medicine, who wants to be an engineer and so on. So that very is my point. piece of you. Uh, very, very great points. Um, I want to answer that question by making two remarks and then I'll share a personal experience. Like you spoke about your last daughter, uh, I'll talk a little bit about my big daughter and um, where I'm at with her. Um, to answer the question, and the question was, does traditional social and corporate culture impact human development the way that it should? Um, my answer to that is that on a scale of one to 10, I believe that uh, 4%, so that 6% more work has, has to be done to really impact human, human development. And when I talk about human, human development, I'm talking about human development with a face. At the Family Plan Institute, we speak a lot about blanket and workplace self-actualization. We talk about human self-actualization. Um, we believe that people are born uh, to live purpose-driven life. And they are born um, to have that sense of self and sense of purpose and uh, to self-actualize. But it's very clear to us based on the research that we would have done that with the best education system, all right, the best education exposure, you are socialized into having an academic content that makes you ready for work. But being ready for work doesn't mean that you're ready for life. Self-actualization is what really ensures that you're really ready to navigate the, the rough and the smooth um, terrains uh, of life. And speaking a little bit on a personal issue, um, because of my background in business and financial intelligence, I also came through the academic system. Um, in many cases, I make a lot of investment in me in terms of the academic system. 
but my daughter would have graduated from one of the top high schools and private high schools in Guyana, and that's uh, Marian Academy. Um, she has tremendous passion for, for medicine and, and art. Um, but I'm asking myself, and she's asking herself because she has financial intelligence. Um, should I go and spend four years to get a medical degree or should I invest um, time, talent and resources to, to build wealth? And perhaps within that five years, she may be able to amalgamate and personal wealth where she can now start thinking of opening an independent hospital. And with her management skills, she employed doctors to help her fulfill her dreams of providing a quality medical service to, to people in Guyana, the Caribbean, and perhaps the world. Uh, so you're right, young people are beginning to ask themselves the right questions with the support of the Family Planning Institute in really helping children, people, families to rethink their financial future. Um, we are helping them to make smarter, better decisions that will ensure that they remove themselves from that paycheck to paycheck cycle and they create uh, an environment where they have financial independence. Um, the beauty that I like about what we are doing, and I believe that our program uh, is set to really impact human lives in a way that most institutions um, cannot. We speak to the point of self-actualization. We have the program uh, that truly position the individuals to connect with their true sense of self and to flow from that, that true sense of self. It is our genuine belief that with the content of information that we will be exposing people to, um, it is the program that will nurture what we call global thinkers, social actors, and transformational leaders. It will nurture the dream makers, the game changers, and the trendsetters. And I believe that this is what society needs, all right? Uh, where we can expose people, regardless of where you are in life, uh, to a content of information that really help them to believe in themselves, uh, that really help them to, to live life from a growth mindset and uh, with the right mental attitude that they are a value to themselves, to the family, to the community, to the organization, to society and the world as a whole. So I'm happy to say at the Family Planning Institute, um, a lot of work has been done uh, to really move this, this process and forward to impact family life. The third question we have here, Frank, is what does a modern social corporate culture looks like um, to you? <laughs> a tough one. What does a modern corporate social culture uh, looks like? Um, let me attempt to answer this one and then um, you will follow up. In the Family Planning Institute, in the leadership program, which is one of the programs that Mr. Frank um, leads, uh, we truly talk of a corporate culture that is three-dimensional. We talk about a human culture that is uh, three-dimensional. First of all, we believe that any culture should really help the individual to uh, have a sense of self. Um, and here is where we help the individual to develop a personal life master plan. Um, we're talking here about the human, human being. The human being uh, is, is more precious than diamond rubies and pearls. So our content, it really pours a lot into the individual that really helps that individual to develop their personal life master plan. From here, we work with the individual to develop their family life master plan. And then we work with the individual to develop their professional life master plan. We believe that these are essential part of any culture that we will develop. I'm saying this against the backdrop also that any organization that is serious about nurturing the sustained high performers, it should be clear to you that nurturing the high performers and getting the high performers is much more than the academic content 
that you are likely to provide in the classroom. Because human performance is not based on a simple classroom rollout of academic content. It relates to uh, social issues, it relates to biological issues, it relates to a number of these issues that at the family planning institutes, we are looking at them so as to ensure that you have the best human resource within the organization. And the family by itself, while we talk about the family planning institute, we talk about the family because the family is the foundation uh, of society. We get the family right, you get organization um, being more healthy, you get society being more healthy, the world becomes a better place. Uh, so when we talk about family, we are not talking about family planning institute. Divorce from the impact that the family is going to have on the organization, on the community, on the country, on the world at large. So we believe that a modern corporate culture must take these uh, factors into consideration where we can truly help uh, the institution to have a sense of self, a sense of purpose, and a sense of direction. Frank, you may, you may follow up. Good. And I, you, did, you made a very good point in the three-dimensional um, role that the FBI plays yeah. in, in corporate culture, social culture. When I um, picture a modern culture, I also sort of look at the, the three um, dimension, which yeah. includes social, environmental, and economic. Mm -hmm. And the, the social aspect of it is where you look at the um, family well-being or the employee well-being. You want to know if there's fair trade that's being done socially. And do also, this social also include the community stakeholders. Mm -hmm. So when you look at social as employee or, or family well-being, fairness of trade, and community stakeholders. If you look at the environment, um, we're talking about basically how we utilize the resources that we have, whether it's land use, right? What is the carbon footprint that you would have left um, in the environment? How do you deal with the waste in the environment? Um, so it's social, environmental, and then we have the economic aspect. What is your revenue? How is your corporation growing? How is your family growing? And what is the cost that will be bleeded out from the corporation or the family? Is the cost more than the revenue? And what do we do about it to at least balance it out or have it in such a way where your revenue um, supersedes your cost. The time to be living in, especially with this COVID uh, season, it, this is very difficult for, for a family who they, they're no longer working. They've laid, been laid off. Where is the finance coming from? And again, you still have bills to pay. Um, I, I spoke to a young man yesterday. He works with character. He can work from home. But what he's saying to me, he said, yes, the salary is good. But at the end of the day, I'm home and it's more stressful because you gotta find more food because the children are home. He's home. AC is being used. Electricity is being utilized. Oh. More water. And so his bills are climbing more than when he is at work. Because when you're at work, you're, you're not utilizing everything that, that much. So the children are at school. You see the thing about it? And so, as the Family Planning Institute, we need, what we, we're doing is that we are showing people how they can save for tough times like this, that emergency savings, that layaway saving for, for hard times like these. What are some of the insurance that you can um, become involved in to cushion all these expenses? And uh, that's how I see the modern um, corporate structure. Okay, excellent. 
the fourth question is what role is the family planning institute uh, playing in the design and rollout of new social corporate um, cultures um, i'm going to repeat what i would have said um, one of the things that we have recognized as, at the family planning institute especially when it comes to the corporate culture is that many persons work for the joy of pay and they are now working for the joy of the work itself and one of our vision is to change that where we are speaking to a new corporate culture that literally gets the individual to experience greater job satisfaction but that must be a corporate culture that looks at the thesis proposed by Abraham Maslow, who is the father of humanistic psychologists, from a different perspective. Fortunately for us at the Family Planning Institute, we have dissected in that thesis. We have seen strengths and weaknesses in the thesis. We have added to the thesis and we have made it our own uh, based on the new systems that we're going to bring into that thesis and uh, to the corporate community that can really help the corporate community to see the human resource from a different perspective and take the brave step forward to to empower them so several things can happen with the empowerment of the human resource um, we see that there will be a reduction significant reduction in absenteeism and a significant reduction in staff turnover based on a new corporate culture that we are proposing. This new corporate culture has been um, designed already. In my last book, Managers to Kids, uh, we spoke about that. It's there. And um, we are, are actively engaging um, uh, some of the top private sector organizations um, to start a serious conversation about this. Um, with a new government, we also will be talking and um, with the new government also to uh, get these programs as a part of the government institutions to bring benefits to the employees and benefit to the state, the economy as a whole. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, we believe that these programs will certainly have tremendous impact on how people live their life and the quality of life that people um, can be exposed to. And as Frankie would have said, um, we also talk a lot about uh, financial models, new financial models, because it is clear to us, based on the research that we are doing across the world, that a single source of income, a primary source of income, is totally inadequate to provide the dreams and the hopes and the aspirations that the average person has. And I speak here to uh, for 80 percent of the global population uh, people have dreams of home ownership car ownership early retirement people have dreams of investing in higher education people have dreams of uh, investing in their children college funds having that emergency uh, savings account having a smart investment account being able to take an all-inclusive family tour anywhere in the world they need money to do that that single source of income is not going to provide them with the means for that to happen Perhaps you have 10% of the global population that may always have that disposable income to invest in these areas. But what we want to do is we are speaking to the issue of providing equity and human resource development at a social and financial level. And uh, we believe that with the right information, um, organizations and state entities can uh, make a very big leap in uh, providing these kind of strategic intervention to get people out of poverty and extreme poverty and bordering and poverty. So for us at the Family Planning Institute, we are prepared to do a lot of work um, moving forward. And this is not just in Guyana, but we intend to work in the Caribbean and the wider um, world. Already we have um, some footprint in North America um, some footprint in the Caribbean, and uh, we will certainly be expanding on the, our role to touch and transform the lives of people all over the world.
Right. Right, and thank you for that point. But one of the things also that we at the FBI is since we are looking at the persons as a whole being not just financial or economical, yeah. but they're mental. Exactly. And we realize that um, because of the stress level mm -hmm. due to not having enough finance, mm -hmm. children to do the basic things that you need to do, mm -hmm. it brings on the, that stress. Mm -hmm. Most times will lead to like a, a, a mental health issue. Mm -hmm. Um, husband against wife, children against parents, and vice versa. Abuse, mm -hmm. violent abuse, physical abuse, you have sexual abuse, you have all sorts of abuse. Mm -hmm. We know that that also because of the stress, people will turn to something for satisfaction as drugs. Mm -hmm. Or some weird habit can be developed through that. And so, one of the things we want folks out there to know is that we have a clinical psychologist who is qualified and experienced mm -hmm. in handling mental issues also. Mm -hmm. If the mind is in the right order, everything else will follow suit. You mind not right, yeah. nothing. You, you, you can get millions of dollars and you don't have the right mind, you'll <laughs> give it away. Exactly. So the mental is, 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 is especially important in this area. I agree. Or right, the last question is, uh, what impact do you see this social corporate culture having on human social and economic development? Last question. You want to take that? No problem. It will impact positively. Positively because the thing about it is if, if you realize that you don't have to depend on that salary, but you have another stream of income. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Because the thing about it is that any other income that comes in automatically will develop your self-esteem, mm -hmm. your economic bearing, your social bearing, your, 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 your assets will improve. Exactly. Because when you know that you have a bigger spending power, that car no longer becomes an issue to going to a new bank to take a loan to dig yourself into deeper mm -hmm. uh, debt. You can say, you know what, I got a means. And so we at the FBI show you how you can do it. I'm not saying that it's going to be like winning the lotto. Mm -hmm. You got to work hard, right? You got to work hard. And I remember saying, a day or two ago, that people um, can win the lotto. Today, and they, don't, they don't know what to do with the money mm -hmm. because they don't mm -hmm. have the, the necessary training and nurturing and, and, and mentorship in how to spend and what to invest in. Mm -hmm. So you suddenly get this wealth and you don't know what to do with it. Time. You don't know what to do with it. So you end up drinking rum and fried fish, and eating fried fish, the chaser. I mean, the thing about it is that it is more than that. And if you have, and we have the right people who can advise, okay, you have a million dollars here. This is what can be done. This is some of the investment that you can do to experience or realize greater returns on your million dollars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great point. Yeah, um, economic development. You, you personally developing in, in that you no longer have to do sponge holidays. A sponge holiday, you're going by somebody and you're it's staying sponge. the holiday and right? you're sponging half with the people. And you could decide you're going somewhere and you can spend a holiday at a hotel or some resort or something. Yeah, because you have the means. I you can contribute to that process of being proud exactly. of us. Exactly. <laughs> right. I love that. Uh, I want to add um, at the Family Planning Institute, um, we will place a lot of emphasis on helping people to understand um, how the commercial financial sector works and uh, how to navigate it. 
um, we spend time working with you to help you to understand how the investment financial sector work and how to navigate it. And the big difference between them in the commercial bank, you have principal and interest to deal with. In the investment sector, you have um, dividends to deal with. Uh, but we also work with people to help them to understand what is the smart capital market and how to navigate this as a family unit and to speak to the issues that some of so that Frank would have spoke about just now. Um, last but, but not least, the next financial model that we look at is financial intelligence for sustainable um, livelihood. Um, so our financial content is a very, very unique content. You will learn both about local um, financial um, possibilities, investment platforms, and you will also learn about international um, investment platform. Now, what we are simply doing to you is bringing this information to you that will allow you to be educated. In the great book we have learned, uh, due to a lack of knowledge of people shall perish, what we are doing to, for you is bringing that knowledge to you. Uh, to give you a fighting chance to succeed financially in life, to succeed socially in life. Um, in our programs, you will learn a lot about what is index funds, what is uh, REIT, which is Real Estate Investment Trust. We don't have them in the in Guyana or the Caribbean, but we have those portfolios in the developed world and uh, very secure systems. Um, and I want to say this to you. Anybody coming to us and they expect to get rich overnight, you're coming to the wrong place. Um, we will teach you about healthy platform that will position you to attain financial freedom, financial independence over a five to 10 year period. Um, we are not the kind of people that is going to encourage our clientele base to take risky investment. Um, we would only tell you to invest in portfolios that we know and portfolios that we have years of experience in terms uh, of working with. So I want to show you that our financial advisor, professional financial advisors and personal financial advisors that will be working with you. Some are right here in, in Guyana and some are in the developed world um, that will be working with you. They have years of experience behind their portfolio in terms of advising you. And so you will be learning from the, the mistakes that they would have made, and you will be learning from the huge um, success that they would have achieved in the, that process of, of building um, financial independence um, for themselves. So without further ado, I want to ask Frank if he has any last closing words in terms of encouraging persons to come up to the Family Planning Institute before we pull the curtain down. Any last word, Frank? Well, um, it's just to extend the invitation. Once you're um, interested in the offers that we have for the improvement of your life, your family life, and by extension your society then we are the people to come to and of course you can get me on telephone number 6386226 and as time goes by we'll be able to link you to the, the website that we have and you can have all the contact information there and the services that are being offered at family planning institute once again i want to thank you for listening yeah, what I'll do, I'll give them that website now. We have a, a sister website, and I want to encourage you to log on to that website now. That website is titled megamoneygy.com, uh, megamoneymediagy.com at gmail.com. Uh, I'm forgetting my own email, uh, Frank. Uh, just let me double check um, that email. It's uh, megamoneygy.com. Uh, give me one second. This has never happened to me before, Frank, where I'm forgetting my, my website. <laughs> I guess the 
I trust this is another sign that the bridge is getting over. All right, it's right here. You, I want you to log on to www.megamoneygy.com. Uh, I've been saying it right all the time. <laughs> www.megamoneygy.com. Uh, and what I want you to do is to navigate shopping. Navigate shopping on the drop down, and you will see some of the programs that we're offering. Remember, that's a sister company. Um, and that's one of the companies that we are partnering with in terms of the rollout of some of the financial education programs for the Family Planning Institute. So I want to thank the viewers for being with us um, today, Facebook and YouTube and uh, LinkedIn and the other social media. I want to encourage you to like and share this, this program because we intend to reach a lot of people uh, across the world in terms of providing them with information that can truly transform um, their lives. Um, so once again, Frank, I want to thank you um, for taking the time out. Uh, we are happy that, to have you as the chairman for the Family Planning Institute. We know that your wealth of knowledge and experience uh, will add tremendous value um, to the program. Again, we want to say kudos to the, the new president of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana. We wish you and your team um, well. We wish you and your family well. Uh, we will be reaching out to you, and we are trusting that you welcome us with open arm, um, as we all want to play a role uh, to contribute to the development uh, of Guyana. See you on the other side, Brian. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.